Hey guys, so in this lesson, we're going to start talking about probability. When you think of the word probability, I want you to think about what is the chance? What is the chance that something will happen? Now, in this lesson, we're specifically going to focus on single events. Now, don't worry. I know you don't know what that means right now. But as we go along, you'll see what I mean. And then in later lessons, we'll start looking at where we're doing multiple events. Okay. So an easy introduction would just be something like this. You know, we've all rolled a dice before. Now, when you roll a dice, what could you roll? You could roll a one. You could roll a two, a three, a four, a five or a six. So how many different things could you roll? Well, there's six different options, okay? There's six different things that you could roll. Now they said, what is the probability that you will roll a three? Now, if you do this, this is incorrect. What a lot of learners do is they say that there's six different options, and then if you wanna roll a three, they put a three here. No, that is not correct. The way you do it is, you look at this and you see how many threes are there. There is one three. So you have a one out of six chance that you would be able to roll a three. If you wanted to roll a five, well, that would have the same. It would also be one out of six. You don't say five out of six. You say one out of six. And then to roll a two, for example, well, there's only one of those. And so that would be one out of six. Okay. Now, if you want to roll a flipping a coin, well, you've got a heads, and you've got tails. So there are two possibilities. Now, if you want to roll a head, how many heads are there? There's one. So you could say one out of two. If you wanted to roll a tail, well, that would also be one out of two. Okay, so that's the basics of probability so far. The number at the bottom is how many things are there. And then the number at the top is the thing that you are looking for. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a pack of cards. Now, a lot of learners from my experience, they don't know cards. So the way that cards work is um, you've got 13 of these ones, which are called clubs. These are called clubs. Then you've got 13 of these ones and they are called diamonds. because you can see it looks like a diamond. Here we've got hearts and here we've got spades. Okay, and this is clubs. Okay, now you've got ace all the way up to the number 10, and then you've got a jack, queen, and king. The next thing is that the hearts and the diamonds are always gonna be red, and then the spades and the clubs are always gonna be black cards. And in total, we have 52 cards, because there's 13, 13, 13, and 13, and 13 multiplied by four is 52. Okay, so that's the way cards work. Some of you might be like, Kevin, what about jokers? Now, we never look at jokers when we're doing cards with probability, okay? So let's have a look here. A person picks a card, determine the probability. Oh, by the way, in this question, how many times did I roll the dice? It said, determine the probability that you will roll a three. So how many times did I roll? Once. In this question, determine the probability that you'll toss a head. So how many, how many times did I, did I um, flip a coin? Once. In this question, a person picks a card. So how much is that? Once. That is what I'm talking about when I say single events. We're only doing something once. In later lessons, we will do something and then we'll do something again. And so that would be called multiple events. Or what did I call it in the next lesson? Uh, oh yeah, multiple events. So that'll come up in a bit, in a few lessons, okay? Um, okay, so a person picks a card. Determine the probability that it is a red card. Okay, so we know that there are 52 cards altogether. So that's the number that we put at the bottom. Just like with the dice, we had six different options. Now we have 52 different options. Now, for it to be a red card, it could be any of these. So that would be 13 plus 13, which is 26. So you type that on your calculator, and then it will simplify to 1 over 2. 1 over 2, okay? Your teacher might use percentage instead. That's okay. We're allowed to use percentage, decimals, or fractions. Fractions are the most popular. Okay, what is the probability that it is a heart? So the hearts are all of these. So out of the 52 cards, 13 of them are hearts. So if you had to go simplify this on your calculator, it'll be 1 over 4. Okay, 
The next question says, it is the number eight. Now that could be um, any one of those. So how many is that? Four out of 52, four out of 52. Go ahead, type that on your calculator. And that'll be one out of 13. So one out of 13. Now, what is the probability that you choose a seven or a nine? Okay, so you're only gonna pick once, but they said you can choose a seven or it could even be a nine. So there's that and there's that. So that's eight cards altogether. So that's eight out of 52. And so that's two out of 13, if you simplify. Two out of 13. Okay, here's another one. A bag contains seven green marbles. Okay, so let's go um, say here seven green, three red, and five blue. Okay, so you will pick one marble. You see how we're only doing one thing at a time in these questions? That once again is what I'm talking about when I say single events. Okay, so it says determine the probability that you will pick a green marble. Okay, so the green is seven of them. Now, how many marbles do we have all together? Well, seven plus seven plus three plus five is 15. So that's seven out of 15. Now, what is the probability that it will be a blue marble? So blue marbles, there are five. Now, if you type this in your calculator, it actually simplifies to one out of three. A bag contains five one rand coins, 10 two rand coins, and six five rand coins. Okay, so think about that carefully. You've got five one rand coins. So I'm gonna draw the five, because this example can get a bit weird. So we've got five of those. Okay, then we've got 10 two rand coins. Okay, and then we've got six five rand coins. So six five rands. Okay, one, two, three, four, Five. Definitely should have done this in a different color for each coin. Anyways, um, okay, so okay, so let's see. Determine the probability that you'll pick a five rand coin. So the, you've got to look at how many coins we have all together. So five plus ten plus six, that's twenty-one coins. And they said you pick a five rand coin. So you're not gonna put a five over here. No, you've got to look at how many five rand coins are there. There are six five rand coins. Now, if you go ahead and type this on your calculator, it will simplify a little bit and it will simplify to two out of seven. This question says, what is the probability that you don't pick a one rand coin? Oh, we haven't done that before. You don't pick a one rand coin. Okay, so out of all of the coins, there's 21. Now they said you must not pick a one rand coin. Okay, so just ignore the one rand coins. So then you could pick any of these coins. So there's 10 two rand coins or six five rand coins. So that'll be 16 out of 21. Now I think that number cannot be simplified. Yeah, that is the answer. Okay, then this question says that you will pick a five rand or a two rand. Okay, so you could pick a five rand, which there's six of those, or you could pick a two rand, which is 10 of those. So you have out of the 16, out of the 21 options, there are 16 that would either be a five rand or a two rand. Okay. And so, as I said, everything that we looked at in this lesson was all about single events. Um, in our next lesson, we're going to start looking at what happens when you do two things. For example, or I'll rather get into that in the next lesson. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much now. But everything we did in this lesson, we were only doing one thing at a time. We didn't pick a coin and then pick another coin straight away. Okay? Everything was one at a time.